local people. Important issues. CBS 10 WILM's weekly focus on the Lower Cape Fear region. This is Byline Wilmington with your host, Don Enzel. Welcome and uh, good morning. Well, how many of you watching right now have made a New Year's resolution to lose weight? Hmm? Well, it's uh, no secret that more and more people in North Carolina and the rest of the country are overweight and out of shape. There is a new local initiative uh, to help us lose weight and follow, follow a healthier lifestyle. Our guests are part of, uh, of the um, movement to do that. They're part of the steering committee of Lose Tons Wilmington. Paige Lowry. Good morning. And Charlie Hauser. Good morning. And thanks for joining us. So how did all of this get started, Lose Tons Wilmington? Well, we came across a website about uh, six months ago that was piloted in Oklahoma City. The uh, mayor of Oklahoma City, well, to start, Oklahoma City was one of those cities that was marked as one of the most obese in the United States. So the mayor... Cities are rated as how obese they are. Oh, yeah. Yes, we're, they are. Well, we're, I'll ask you, where's Wilmington? Okay, all right. <laughs> but uh, so the mayor said he's got to do something. He laid down the gauntlet, challenged the city to uh, let's go on a diet. So he put the entire city of Oklahoma City on a diet. And we, we got wind of it, saw the site, uh, saw the results, and uh, decided to take on the project ourselves. Well, where is Wilmington when it comes to obesity? It's, it's <laughs> not, not a pretty number. Really? It really isn't. Um, the Cape Fear region, which includes obviously Wilmington, Brunswick County, parts of Pender County, it's estimated that over 60% of adults in this area are obese or overweight, and that is a horrifying number. 30% of kids are overweight or obese, and those numbers, Don, at the rate they're going, in another 10 years, those numbers are going to be far higher than they are today. But, but this region is kind of worse than other areas in the in the countries to my understanding is that right it is a lot of that's the culture the types of foods uh that that's pretty well dictated that's right that good <laughs> southern cooking a lot of gravy and and some good food well what what happened i mean what what led us down this path i i think it's what charlie said i think it's the fact of Southerners, and I love this area, I moved here by choice, and I don't mean any of this to be derogatory, but Southerners have always been known for their poor eating habits. I know people here who've never encountered a green vegetable. No, I'm serious. And you see people whose meals consist of ham, um, mashed potatoes with gravy but, and something fried and that to them is a balanced but, meal. But in, in all fairness the entire country is in a, a sort of an overweight or almost an obesity epidemic isn't it? I mean it's not just the yes, South. But we may be worse but uh, the is it is it because of how the path that of, of, uh, uh, of affluence we used to have to uh, grow our food, uh, tend the horses that would get us places. Uh, now we kind of yell if we have to get up and change the channel and can't find the remote. That's right. We take the golf cart down to the mailbox just <laughs> to get true. the mail. And that's a lot of it. I think the, uh, the lack of activity, the lack of particularly being outdoors and, and doing things on a regular basis has, has changed that culture quite a bit around here. North Carolina is, regrettably, number 46 out of 50 states in terms of adult inactivity. That means that out of all the states, North Carolina is at the very bottom of the pile when it comes to adults being active. We don't walk anymore. We really. don't walk. Not only t with intention. Oh, I better get out and walk. Right. I mean, we right. used to have to walk to town, mm -hmm. uh, to, school. to the post office, to school. Yeah. You know, now it's like, uh, <laughs> like Charlie said, you got to get in your golf cart to go to the mailbox. Well, I'll give you another example. Think of when you and I used to go bike riding, and we used to bike ride for miles. We did. And we now used to Paige, we can't By the way, let me just interrupt. Paige full is, disclosure. Full disclosure. Paige is my neighbor. Yes. And so. Uh, and I came on this show in spite of that <laughs> fact. 
So, but we used to bike a lot, and we can't anymore because where we live, there are more cars, there's obviously more traffic, there's more construction, and there's no way for a, us to get out and be active. Let's talk about what's the results of this epidemic of, uh, of overweight and uh, uh, obesity. Uh, the biggest impact, of course, health. Correct. Yeah. Um, you're seeing things like diabetes, just and high blood pressure, those types of things that are just going through the roof. And we're becoming so reliant on medications and processes and procedures that we've just totally forgotten to take care of ourselves. And yet Americans are living longer than they ever lived. Well, what, well that's, I think that's a little misleading. The overall statistics, yes, we're living longer because you've pretty much eliminated a large part of childhood diseases. Um, women don't die in childbirth anymore. Infant mortality is a lot better than it used to be. But yeah, you're but seeing... people are living <clears throat> longer. Yes, because you're seeing more people with cancer, and yes, we have the medical wherewithal now to extend those lives. But people are not living necessarily healthier longer. People in the old days, you had plenty of people who still lived into their 80s and 90s. But you did have a lot of childhood diseases that now we've wiped out with antibiotics. So it's, it's tough to, to take statistics and really compare them equally. Charlie, would, would you agree? Or? I agree with that. And I also think it's uh, you know, just the fact that we're more inactive. We're getting off those bicycles you guys rode, so you're not getting out there on the roads and getting hit by cars, for crying out loud. <laughs> so that's, that's part of it. And, and our lifestyles have changed. Uh, in, 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 we don't, we don't like, I don't, I wonder if families actually sit down to dinner anymore. You know, there used to be yeah. the family <laughs> sat down, that was a requirement. You sat down, mm -hmm. you got together, you sat down, you had dinner. You discussed the day's events, you discussed yeah. what happened at school, you discussed the weather. But uh, w that's not happening anymore. No, because now you, your dinner consists of either you've got the television right there that you all sit and look at with your mouths hanging open and just kind of blah. Or the kids are sitting there texting and, and Twittering and playing games on their iPhones and iPods and stuff. So no, there isn't that, that, in a, there isn't that interaction, nor that, that abil ability or desire to fix wholesome meals that the whole family can enjoy. You eat on the run. Yeah, and, and it used to be that, that um, we, we, being healthy was part of our, our lifestyle just by happenstance. Now we have to actually work Be conscious. at being healthy yeah. mm -hmm. because of the changes. And, and to kind of add what Paige is saying, I think a lot of that changed too when we got to the point where both folks in the household had to work. You know, mom wasn't home anymore to cook dinners and have things ready right. and prompt that whole process. So I think that changed things quite a bit here in the last I don't know that we should get into this. Yeah, much. that's right. What? We, we could I be mean, no, well, no, no, but Char it's absolutely did, right. Did that's the liberation true. of women add to how unhealthy? I mean, see, I hate that whole thing, liberation. I mean, don't call it liberation. Just the fact that women finally did get out and have the right to work and to contribute to the family finances yeah. or whatever. And yes, of necessity, the woman, instead of being home all day, she now gets home at five or six o'clock at night, and it's difficult to prepare a meal. But on the other hand, we do have things like crock pots, which you can leave cooking all day long. We have microwave ovens. So that excuse isn't, I don't think, 100% valid. All right, we're going to come back. We're talking about Luz Tons Wilmington. It's a, a new effort uh, to, uh, to help us live healthier lifestyles and uh, take off weight in the new year. We're going to talk about the website and... What about fast food? What's that done to our lifestyles? We'll come right back and talk about it with Paige Lowry and uh, Charlie Hauser right after this. Stay with us.